Not bad. Not bad. Pretty good game. I, I like the, the game concept, Mana Lords. Like a city builder with forms of economy and, you know, to get bread, you need a multitude of other things. Like you need to do wheat from the farm and then from the farm, you take the wheat into the mill and then the mill creates flour and the flour creates the bread at the bakery. Always been a fan of those style of games. Like Knights of Merchants is like one of the first games I ever like dove into that had that kind of structure of um, gameplay. There's a couple of bugs. You feel like something's not working right. I would recommend to restart the game. I did that a couple of times and things started to make sense. I think this game has a lot to do with like your residential building positioning in correspondence with uh, the market and some of the amenities for them because that kind of limits you on how you can upgrade your actual main building or main uh, town rather. So for instance, we're a large village and to go from a large village to a small town, we need X, Y, and Z. And you can't upgrade unless you have certain requirements from the actual residential building. So like we would need a tavern. In order to get the tavern, we need ale. And in order to get the ale, we need the malt. And in order to get the malt, you need the farm. And then the farm would then have the malt. And if you wanted a faster farm, then you need ox. And then the ox would then plow and those types of things. And then it has like soil quality and whatnot for uh, the actual crops themselves. So if you just keep harvesting a plot of land, eventually it's not going to be as fertile and you're going to have to give it a season to regain its nutrients, those types of things. So there, there's a lot of tie in with that. I was a little confused at the army in, in, originally. It looks like it's kind of based around your actual citizens. So there's a couple of different ways to get warriors or, or, or army, I guess you would say. The one way is to hire mercenaries. So depending on your cash flow and whether or not you can actually purchase them, you can hire different mercenaries and they'll arrive in different locations, whether it be your city or somewhere else and uh, you can then fight with those. Um, the other way is to use your actual citizens. So again, if you have them all allotted to certain buildings and whatnot, you'll actually take them off of those nodes. For the period of time, I kind of scuffed myself in the middle because I was like preparing an army, but I didn't realize it was taking my citizens. So there's that. Now there's another thing called retinue, and I'm not 100% sure what that is. Retinue right there. I managed to get five at one point, and now it's saying that I have 24 available, and I'm not really sure exactly what this all means i'll have to look into that for the next playthrough but i think a lot of this is like even in the they call the burgage plot the residential housing you can assign different things in the backyard if it's large enough so almost like a, a brewery extension or you know a chicken coop or a bakery extension so you may not have the main core buildings i think they'll probably be more efficient but you can base it off of your actual like residential buildings so depending on how you set these up that'll depict how big the backyard is and these were the actual only two that i was able to do something additional with even at this size i wasn't able to so they do have to be kind of large in order for you to do that but yeah kind of some interesting building and um there's different like game modes so like we did one where we wanted to protect our city we would get sieged and then we had to basically combat against that there's another one where you would build up your forces and then go attack them and try to take them out. Um, I've seen some pretty big scale fights, a little bit slower, a little bit more uh, methodical, kind of like a, I haven't really played it too much, but kind of reminds me of like a total war fighting environment. Um, maybe not as complex, but it has some similarities and elements to it. And then there's different tiles in these maps. I think there's going to be like policies and diplomacies like these outlaws. We started to do uh, some random stuff with them. Apparently we can declare war at this point, uh, depending on how much influence that we have over the world. There's also different plots where, say, you have rich material. So like wild animals, rich deposit, uh, rich deposit for iron, etc. You might be able to do like a deep mine on the iron deposit and indefinitely get to harvest that material. Whereas in my area, the only thing was rich berry deposit, but that gives me a decent amount every single year. But I did see that it was showing that it was like, it was like diminishing, I think is what it was saying, like reducing in size. So I don't know if over a period of time that kind of like eaters out or whatnot, but you can take over different tiles, almost like a risk scenario and uh, have different like trade point with different um, factions and whatnot. I'm not sure if there's a multiplayer element of this. This would be kind of cool with a multiplayer, even if it was against AI. But uh, so far, the game's pretty good. That's my first look over, what, four or five hours of gameplay. 
I plan on diving into another campaign. I'll probably wash this campaign, to be honest. I learned a lot in terms of like how to position the buildings and whatnot, so we'll try out some new things and um, see how that goes. But yeah, like right here, upgrade to a deep mine. So develop a deep mine on a rich deposit, and then you can um, extract resources indefinitely if it's placed over a rich deposit. So I would probably imagine it would maybe do it a little bit slower than a normal deposit, but it would give you unlimited rather than a limited amount of resources because we ran out of iron and ran out of clay if we don't kill some of the camps periodically like there'll be this camp like a bandit camp if you don't take them out they steal your resources so they were yoinking like all my big material which was kind of annoying i held off on attacking them but i do think that you need to micromanage that as you go through your playthrough otherwise you're going to lose a lot of material so i would take like a small little army equal or greater than what they have and try to take out those things and then also the other thing is when you were taking over the actual camps like this the bandy camp when you actually you know killed whatever was around it and then you were able to pillage it quote unquote they would give you material where you can either a give it to the locals or take it for yourself i took it for myself because screw that and uh, it was giving me a ton of treasury money which i wasn't really generating in the beginning i tried taxes but taxes were destroying me so maybe i did it a little too early i'm not sure but it's not like so like let's say you increase taxes and you're like okay i'm gonna increase uh taxes right here and uh it's gonna show a prediction approval loss of minus six but that actually gets added on and let's say next month i was like okay i don't want that anymore and i remove that it doesn't take the six and remove the six automatically like i was up to a minus taxation of like minus 39 and every 30 days so the previous 30 days, it says recent 30 days, previous 30 days, or previous, whatever. It actually takes time to roll off. So I was only jumping off like nine or 10 points. So if your approval rating starts to dump, it's gonna take a little bit for it to reverse. So I'll have to learn a little bit more about that. But there's also talent trees, development po uh, policies, productions, all those sort of things. Um, it looks like some is still in development but kind of a really cool element of it. But they also had this retinue customization, which I don't really, haven't really dove into, and I'm not sure what 554 means, and if I'm able to buy more or just customize, and it looks like there's gonna be some talent trees involved with these bodyguards or whatever they are. So lots of uh, implementation there. So it'll be curious to see what they do. I'm not sure if this is a uh, multiplayer or not. Here, let's go back to the main menu. It doesn't look like it is, but if it would be like maybe modded, like I, I find that a lot of these types of games get mods d down the road eventually, which uh, could open up for those types of things. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not that's um, a possibility, but pretty cool first look. I always like playing like Civilization or Banner Lords or, you know, Age of Empires or those types of games. So the focus on a refined single player experience with no multiplayer or cooperative mode planned at this moment. Yeah, who knows? Maybe they'll open it up to the, the modders and maybe them jump into those types of things. I, I don't know. I think I think it being a single player is acceptable too. I think it works out well for this type of game. It seems like there's going to be different gameplay modes too. Pretty good so far though. Enjoyed it.